Hey, what up everybody? So today I want to talk to y'all how password protection on the Excel worksheet. It's a joke, man. It is a, I, I mean, I think it's crazy whenever I see people try to keep their, their worksheets safe, right? Like they don't want nobody to, uh, manipulate anything. So what they end up doing is they password protect their worksheets. And they think that that's going to keep it safe. And here's the thing about it, though, right? I think the majority of users, it may, right? Most people that I talk to, especially people that are not technical users, they're like, oh, I can't do nothing. They password protected it, right? Um, so they feel stuck. And if there's stuff they have to change, they have to address it to the author of the file. They make the changes you know, reapply the password protection, then distribute the file out again, right? So, but what I'm going to tell you here is that Excel password protection is a joke, and I'm going to show you a few ways on how to update some of these values and also how to unprotect the worksheet. So let's get started. So first off, I'm going to start off with a basic um, Excel file. So let me go ahead. I, I kind of put a basic Excel file together already. Let's take a look at it. Uh, let's see. Okay. So here's a, a very basic Excel file, right? We have name, we have age. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and write a few other ones, right? Again, nothing special, very basic Excel file. Let me go ahead and save it. What I'm gonna do here though, is let's go ahead and protect this sheet, right? I want everything locked. I'm gonna go ahead and put a password. I'm just gonna call it test123, right? Test123. So now what that means, if I try to click anywhere, it's pretty much telling me I can't because it's password protected, right? So I'm not, I don't have the ability to change anything. So from an Excel user, this is what they get. They want to add a new line, line, a new name. Oh, they can't. They want to update the age. Oh, they can't, right? They can't do shit. So now that, let me go ahead and save it, close out of it. Now we're going to use Python to to first, we're going to use Python to update one of these values. So what I should have done, let's go back to it. So for example, let's say if you need the name updated, right? You don't want it to say name. You want it to say first name, but you can't do it, right? It doesn't allow you to do it. So one option is going to be let's update that cell to show first name. Now, before we get started, the, the library that we're going to use, again, we're using Python in this case, but we're going to be using the um, open PYLX library. So that's what we're going to be using. Um, that is used for uh, reading and writing Excel, which is what we, we, you know, which is what we're trying to do, right? So. You can find more information about it on their website. Um, what I'm going to do is I created a Excel, uh, my bad. I created a uh, Python file. I just called it Excel.py. So now let's get started. Let's, let's write our script. First off, we need to import in the, the library, right? So let's go ahead and get that imported in open py. Uh, import load workbook. So in this case, we're loading a workbook, right? So it makes sense. Uh, I need to specify now. You could tell my file lives in the same pass of my Python file. My Excel file lives in the same pass of my um, Python file. So I'm just gonna just ultimately though it could live somewhere else, right? But uh, Python uh, directory file pass. Um, oops, what the hell? All right. 
right? So there's my Python. Uh, that's that's my Excel pass for my workbook. Uh, the next thing would be we need to generate a object of the workbook. So ultimately, we need to load the Excel file as an object. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it workbook. Uh, load workbook. And then I'm gonna specify again the pass and file. Uh, so ultimately, this would end up loading this um, Excel uh, workbook. Uh, the next thing that I would need to do is I need to specify the worksheet in this case. So I'm going to call it worksheet equals workbook. And ultimately, it's pretty much by index, right? So in this case, it's going to be the name of the actual sheet, which in my case, it's called sheet one. So that's how I'm specifying which specific sheet that I want to. In this case, we're, remember, we're modifying uh, the name. We're going to change it from the word, um, from the value name to first name. So I'm specifying which worksheet it is. All right. So now that I have that in order, let me go ahead and call worksheet. Um, same thing. In this case, I'm specifying the um, the placement, right? Um, so in, in, in Excel, you have your um, you have your rows, which is strictly numeric, one, two, three, etc. And then of course you have your columns, right? A, B, C, and D, and, and so on. Um, there's two ways to do it. There's a what's called um, you're you're pretty much calling the the actual name of the cell in this case, right? A one or A two, for example, or A three whatever it may be, we're, that's how we're doing it in this case. Um, so it's the value, because we're gonna assign a value to it, right, in this case. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna assign it first name, all right? Once we assign the value to that cell, the next thing is gonna be, so keep in mind, this file is password protected, right? So even though the user is trying to prevent people like myself or anybody else, from updating the values, we're still gonna do that. So ultimately what we did here, we specify the that cell, we're gonna assign it the value first name. Uh, let me change this first name. And then the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna save it. We're gonna save the workbook. Again, under the same name that we had it before. You don't have to save it under the same name, it could be under a different name, but in this case, we're doing it, we're saving it under the same name. And then I'm going to, uh, close the connection to this um, instance. So again, pretty straightforward when you think about it, right? You got your file uh, directory, file pass. You're loading the workbook, right? Which I got a workbook object. You're specifying the sheet for this workbook. I'm calling it worksheet. You could have multiple sheets, right? But in this case, we're just dealing with one sheet. And then within the sheet, you're specifying the cell that you're trying to, in this case, update the value to, right? So in my case, it's A1. Um, it could be anything else. And I'm updating the value. Now, A1, my worksheet A1, there's other stuff I could update. It doesn't have to be the value. I could update the background color, like the cell color, the font, the size. There are other attributes, right? Other um, settings to update. But in my case, I'm focusing specifically on the value, which is why I'm calling the value and I'm assigning this value to it. Um, then I'm saving it, right? Work, I'm saving it under the same name, then I'm clothing the instance. So again, before, uh, before I run it, let's go back and just wanna confirm. Again, just want to kind of show y'all if I were to open this up, I cannot modify it, right? I just wanna make sure we're on the same page. So now let me go ahead and run this. Yep, okay, it's done. So now let's go back and let's reopen this back up. So as you can see, I still can't modify it. It's still locked, but I changed the value. The value got changed, right? So. 
this is one way where if you still want it to stay password protected. Let's say if you're dealing with somebody that password protects the file and you know if you unpassword protected and you don't know the password, so you can't re-password protect it under the same password. Um, and if you but if you give the this file back to the user that created it and they get it unpassword protected, hey, they may get all mad because you know or you don't want to let people know that you're updating um their files in this manner um again some people are very anal again it's the lack of knowledge right they feel like my worksheet is protected and you know and then once they find out that's being unprotected uh they're gonna get all butthurt and who knows what right but nevertheless what we just did we updated it and we left it password protected and on top of that, if I go to unpassword protected, boom, again, it didn't change the password. So the, whoever put the password on, it still has the same password for them. Um, it doesn't affect that aspect of it. Um, so let me put the password back. All right, cool. So now it's back to being password protected. Let me save it close out so now let's say if um because this has happened to um to me a few times but some of my clients that i deal with where they get an excel file from let's say a vendor and um it's password protected but there's value that they're trying to extract and they don't know how to extract it because they can't copy it they can't do none of that so that's where I come in. It's actually very, very simple, but you gotta understand, even though it's so simple, from a client's perspective, they see it as, it's magic. Oh, you're a hacker, how did you hack it? And they, you know, they, they think it's cool. But at the end of the day, it's actually very, very simple. So now let's go ahead and unprotect that worksheet. All right, so let's do that. So what we're gonna do is, there's no need to update a value, because that's not what we're trying to do in this case. What we're gonna end up doing is, we're going to, now specify the worksheet um, protection sheet equals false. All right, so what that's ultimately what that means is right now this worksheet has the protection as true because it is password protected, right? We just want to remove that setting. You know, we want to uh, configure, we want to rewrite that setting where now we're saying, hey, the, pack, the, the worksheet is not password protected no more, which ultimately means it removes it, right? So now let's go ahead and rerun it again. Uh, what did I do? Oops, I uh, put an S at the end. No S. Let's try again. Uh, what the hell? Um. Uh, Let's see what happened here. Um, oops, you know what? I need to learn how to spell. I didn't spell it properly, that's why. Protection, all right, got it. So now let's run it. All right, cool, so now it ran good. Now let's go back and let's open up this file. So now, as you can see, I'm able to change the cells. I could add, you know, more people. You could change the, the ages. I mean, now you have access, right? It's pretty much unprotected. So again, to all my devs out there, right? This is very, very, very easy, right? A lot of y'all may even know this already, though they who don't know it. If you ever come across this in your workplace, somebody is dealing with this issue, it is very, very easy to unprotect it. And if anything, it's gonna, it's gonna make you look like this, you know, um, elite hacker when in reality it is so simple and it's just one of those flaws of Microsoft, the way it was built where it's really is a joke. And when you think about it, it's a joke on why people even use it. But that's fine, right? They could keep using it and I will keep unlocking it. Simple as that. Uh, hopefully y'all found this video 
to be uh, useful. Again, um, there will be more videos like this coming out, more tips and tricks. Um, I'm actually gonna, I actually ordered some parts. I'm gonna rebuild my desktop. So my main machine, which is what I'm using right now, which is my MacBook Pro, this is what I use on a daily basis. I do a lot of work that is very heavily as well, um, like Microsoft related, right? Whether it be uh, Microsoft SQL Server or whether it be, you know, maybe .NET or SSIS and just different other stuff like that. So um, I do have a VM on here that I use on my MacBook Pro. But it's not the same, man. I need a new machine. So ultimately, I'm building a new machine, a new desktop machine specifically for that. I still use my MacBook Pro as my primary machine, but this new desktop be my secondary machine. It's actually I'm gonna use Linux. I'm gonna be running Linux on it. Uh, I, again, I just like Linux better. Nothing against Microsoft, so hey, don't start bashing me. But I do prefer Linux than Microsoft. But I'll be. Um, uh, running a, a VM on it to run Windows and um, but again if you are interested I'll be building this PC you know I'll be recording it I'll be filming it and kind of reviewing the parts and you know doing all that stuff again I'm not a hardware guy I want to make that very clear I'm a software guy but I, I, I know enough and hey I may make some mistakes and if I do Maybe some y'all can help me out if I make mistakes. But nevertheless, I'll be releasing a video shortly over me building my new um, desktop. And I have other videos that I'm going to be making related to Python of real projects. Keep in mind, most there's a lot of tutorials out there that are really teaching people about how to write code, right? Whether it be on a beginner level or, or, or so on. Uh, I don't really want to reinvent the wheel. But what I do want to do is share some of the projects that I have worked on, like again, real pain projects, you know, real projects, real world projects, right? Solving real problem to kind of share with what I did to solve some of these problems and, you know, how I, you know, just kind of be able to share my experience in that area and hopefully help some of y'all out. So give me a like, I'll really appreciate it. Again, I'm just getting started on YouTube, so hopefully if things, you know, I'm going to keep, hopefully y'all like it. If y'all do, let me know, and I'll start, you know, I'll start sharing more of the projects that I've been working on. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace.